what are the ways to teach our kids the deen? Would you recommend moving to a Muslim country to raise them as a means to enhance their religious upbringing? And then uh, second part to that is, how do we teach our kids resilience? How do we get the next Muhammad al-Fatih? How do we get the next Salah al-Din Ayyubi? Uh, what are the uh, practical terms in order to get children like these? The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, he said, Al-Imamu Junnah yuqatalu wara'ahu. To the end of the hadith. Uh, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, the leader or the Imam is a shield that is fought behind. Um, to the end of the hadith. Now, the reason why I mentioned this hadith is because in reference to the question and how do we, uh, what is the best way to instill these, these, this courage, this resilience, these, these wonderful heroic values into our children. And that is as us being leaders in our households, Leadership in Islam, the way that we were taught by Allah and His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, is that we lead from the front. And so when it, when it comes to our children, our children are watching us. Our children are actually watching what we do and listening to what we say more than what we are actually sitting them down and forcing them to read in a book. Our children are watching our actions, how we interact with other people, how we talk to other people, how we respond to situations and circumstances. And so my advice uh, to all of the parents here in raising the children with these qualities or these heroic uh, qualities like resilience and patience and, and, and steadfastness, uh, being courageous, is for us ourselves to embody these qualities. It's too many times when, and, and I'm, I'm going to say this, and may Allah uh, help me in saying this, but I'm going to say it. It's too many times when I have a father will come into my office or call me on the phone and say, my son, I need help with my son. My son is, has this issue with this or this issue, these qualities. I'm trying to teach my child. I'm trying to teach my child this. I'm trying to teach my child that. Uh, but at the same time, that father doesn't make salah. That father doesn't make salah. That father is not the embodiment of the values that he's complaining that his, his son or his daughter, they don't themselves have. How can we expect for a 13-year-old who's growing up in the United States of America with all being bombarded with feminism, with LGBTQism, with this ism, with that ism, and all of these isms being bombarded with all of this. And then we ourselves, we go to work, we're trying to fit in because we're trying to fit in. We cower, we, we're acting and behaving cowardly in our jobs. We're acting, we're acting cowardly with the neighbors. We're not being resilient. We're not being patient. And then we turn around and we command our children to be resilient, to be, uh, to have, to have courage and to be patient. It's not going to work because our children are going to act and behave in a manner in which we, we, that, that in a manner that we ourselves show them how to act and behave. And so my advice in teaching these teaching our children these qualities that we want our children to have, these values that we want them to have, is for us first and foremost to embody these qualities because leadership, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us, leadership is from the front. We don't lead from the back and command out and, and you know yell out commands from the back, do this, do that. But rather, we are out front doing and behaving and acting and showing and setting the example so we can educate, we can motivate, and we can inspire this next generation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I would say um, many things to be said. Uh, to add on to the beautiful advice, solid advice, consistency between rewards and punishments. You have to be consistent with your children. You have to show and you have to teach your children is that son, whenever you work hard, whenever you do the right thing, 
Whenever you sacrifice, whenever you discipline yourself, whenever you ignore, ignore pain and fatigue, you will see the results sooner or later. And the dean, as my son on the football field, that's a fact. And when you're lazy, when you're forgetful, when you're negligent, when you disobey, when you don't work hard, you don't do what you know you're supposed to do, you must suffer. And you're going to feel the pain of, of, of that lack of effort and that lack of concentration. So I think this has to be done wherever you're living, uh, overseas in an Islamic land or a Muslim land or the different terms, you know, or in a Western land or non-Islamic land. So consistency between reward and punishment. There are many children who do the right thing. Abby, I memorized this. I, I memorized this. Abby, and so, oh yeah, good, sure, right, yeah, okay. And that's it. And they just brush them off. And a child is so pure, so innocent, that they keep saying, Abby, I memorized the surah. You want to hear my surah? Allah like but I learned how to pray. Yeah, alhamdulillah, good. Instead of you immediately rewarding them every single time that they do good, you teach them mentally the reward of goodness is nothing more than goodness. And when you don't do the right thing, you mess up, regardless of what that mess up or wrong thing is, you're going to suffer. And there lies no doubt when we talk about Muhammad al-Fatih or Salah al-Din al uh, and the other great conquerors and generals and caliphs and sultans, so on and so forth, they knew the value of consistency between reward and punishment. And they knew the value of preparation and hard work and sacrifice. If you ever read and study the, people say the fall of Constantinople, but the rise of Constantinople, how long, how much effort, time, money, and sacrifice was put into that battle and the conquering of that city. And if you talk about Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi and the Battle of Hatim and all of those different battles and skirmishes with the Crusaders, the Richard, Lionheart, so on and so forth. If you look at the years of preparation and of hard work and of sacrifice, and subhanAllah, last thing I will say, since you brought up Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, not too many people know about him and his history is that different uh, authors who've written about him, they say he was skinny and scrawny. He was like a weakling. And he was more inclined towards knowledge, studying theology. And one of the reasons why he rose so fast in the ranks, there are many reasons, is that the people looked at him as never being a threat. They looked at him as being a scholar. And it wasn't meant for him to be this vicious conqueror and this menace to the crusaders and the other enemies of Islam, etc. So the moral of the story is he didn't win overnight, but he won after many hard years of sacrifice. So if you want your son to be like these great men, these great women, you have to teach them the values that made those men and women great. And those values aren't just romantic values, but it's hard work. And whenever you work hard, you're going to be rewarded. By Allah, first and foremost, inshallah, I myself as your father, as your mother, I'm going to make sure that I reward you immediately. And when you do the wrong thing, Allah will be displeased with you. You have problems in your life. I won't be pleased with you. Disciplinary actions, so on and so forth. And that's applicable to sports, to school, to seeking knowledge. And the list goes on. Allah ta'ala. So this is a huge issue. It's a huge subject to discuss. Uh, but uh, if I might, must add something to what the Mashayikh said, which is which I corroborate everything they said and second everything they said. But if I must add something, I would say that um, feel your need for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in this quest to raise your children. Uh, feel uh, your deficiency, your poverty, your need, um, and uh, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicate and invoke Allah all the time uh, and show him your brokenness, your inkisar, your ikhbat, your submissive humility, uh, and just uh, speak with Allah, have a, like an, like a, Consistently do this. Uh, speak with Allah all the time. Tell him I, I won't be able to do it. Uh, and there are so many odds against you. 
but see, is, uh, seek Allah's help. And if you seek Allah's help, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almighty uh, and all capable. Uh, so that is one thing. The other thing is make sure that you pur purify your earnings. Make sure that you purify your earnings because any body that emanates from haramness or from unwholesome earnings, uh, then uh, its dest destination is hellfire. So just make sure that you feed yourself and you feed. If you look at the history of our scholars, like, like Imam al-Bukhari, for instance, and many, many uh, stories of our greatest scholars, uh, just go back and, and uh, study what their parents have done and who their parents were. And even if they were not great scholars, they were really pious people. And they fed their kids halal food. That's halal food, not necessarily zabiha only. That's the, the food that was earned from, for, from, from that which is uh, halal. Uh, even, you know, people who, ha who were orphans, like Imam Shafi'i, uh, for instance, their, 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 their mothers, like Sufi al Thawri, others, uh, their mothers have put a great deal into raising them, made great sacrifices uh, to raise them, uh, spent all of their uh, wealth on, on their kids. So all of this is important. It's also important to be realistic because what is tarbiya? What, what tarbiya comes from? You, 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 did you, you notice the similarity between tarbiya and riba? You know, riba is increase, and tarbiya is basically to help your child grow to their fullest potential. They have a potential. Help them grow to their fullest potential in every possible virtue. So you have to be knowledgeable of your child and knowledgeable to some extent of what raising children is about, you know, child development and how to deal with a two-year-old versus a five-year-old versus a 14-year-old and so on. So it does require some knowledge and does require moderation and realism. You have to be realistic about your child's potential and if and, and try to grow their, you know, their virtues as much as possible and try to help them suppress their weaknesses and their vices as much as possible, because that is your role. Your role is just helping them find, reach their fullest potential in uh, being good servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in being the best servants of Allah they could be. And that encapsulates all the virtues that are out there. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our kids and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless them and bless the, all of our progeny and bless the community. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our hearts uh, to do that which is best for ourselves and for everyone who's uh, under our care.